The streets is dead, entertainment is slavery, and sports is a mix of both. Let me explain something to you. When it comes to entrepreneurship and being able to feed yourself, it's the only thing we can do in this world. It's the only option is being able to feed ourselves, educate ourselves, and prepare ourselves to go to war with the world so we can have a decent life based off of the principles and things that we desire out of life. Let's get it. Welcome to Wealth Therapy. Marcus, a.k.a. Mr. 500, let's go! Anything you want in this world is dependent on... Everybody wants to be wealthy. Everybody wants to get money, but why? I did 25 million in the last two years. I come from nothing. You gotta move the earth. You gotta take action. You gotta act. Some of y'all are scared to tell people, fuck you. Stay back, nigga. Ride big. Ice big. Nice crib. White fig started out just sweeping flows. Now fat boy the CEO. Everybody want to stand out. You can't be the same and be different. You'll never be the best in your industry if you do what everybody else doing. You know you got the mindset. You know you got the ambition. It's just you haven't got the fuck up. Either I'm going to do this shit and execute or I'm going to fucking die. You talk as well. And I'm dripping south. This time we do the sell. I never knew getting money would affect me mentally. How many of you guys want to be most millionaires and create a legacy in a brand? We ain't in this for clout. We out here to get money. It's a whole lot of money in this motherfucker. It's my wealth therapy. Yo, listen. I got an exciting episode today. Y'all understand something. I, I see a lot of people in sports, a lot of people in the entertainment industry, but it's a lot of us in business, and y'all know how I do it. Wealth therapy, before we get started, we always got to talk about the scent, all right? We always got to talk about the scent. Listen, I ain't even put on cologne today. I got on Luxury Life Butter Presidential. Presidential, why? Because we're going to have a presidential conversation. Listen, today is not just me on the wealth therapy couch. Today, I also got my brother. Dion, Mr. Metro 2, Mr. <laughs> Phenomenal, Mr. Uh, 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 everything under the sub, man, amazing family man, um, ex cell phone employee, cell phone mm. uh, salesman, you name it. Uh, We're going to have a conversation today For sure. about business. Let's do it. Listen, so listen, man, Wealth Therapy, um, welcome you to the couch. You are my second guest. Really? Only, only other person I did. Um, on wealth therapy with no, 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 I'm lying. Third. Okay. Third guest. Yeah. I had two other guests. Um, um, Jonathan, um, finesses only. Yeah. Yep. And I had my brother, Josh Rico, um, mm. as well. So listen, I'm excited. Um, bro, I said, it's funny. I, and I, and I, and I said, it, is that the streets is dead. Looking mm -hmm. at everything that's going on with a little dirt, yeah. Um, you from Chicago, coming out of that environment. Yeah. Um, streets is dead. Sports is entertainment. Mm -hmm. Is slavery. Mm -hmm. We all know that. You, we look at the entertainers and we see what they're doing, um, how they benefit off of different propaganda and stuff like that. Then you got um, outside of just that propaganda. Then now we go into and the reason I say. Um, Sports is a mix of both because they benefit off of us, but it's also dead um, because it's, it's a small likelihood that you make it. Mm -hmm. You play college ball. Yep. What was that like? Like, how does that, like playing college ball, right? Because most people I see, they live and then they end up, especially hooping, they end up being LA fitness superstars. <laughs> <laughs> right? And then they, they be there so much, they become a personal trainer. Yeah. <laughs> And so the thing about that, I look at it um, when I sit there, is that it's programming. We yeah. get programmed in sports to yeah. train, work out, do things, and it's, it becomes a part of your natural ability. Yeah. Um, I mean, your natural day. It's like your day-to-day -day activities. It's yeah. all you know. Yeah. How you? How? What did that? How did that affect you going into business? Did it have pros or cons? For wow. You? Well, first of all, I'll say. I appreciate being the third guest here. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, next level. I appreciate that. Um, taking time to sit here and you know have wealth therapy, high level type of conversation, you know, yeah. for and with the people. Um, man, to be honest with you, coming out of Chicago, you couldn't have told me I was gonna go to college. Period. Mm. Like I wasn't. I didn't know that. I was gonna go to college. And getting the opportunity to play ball was really the only thing that took me to college because I was really good in high school. Um, started had a really good career and all I knew is that college was just knocking at my door and my mom was like 
you gonna go to college. And I, so for me, it was I was the first person in my family to go to college and graduate. So you know so, what I mean. And mm-hmm. then so it was like then to take going to college and having to play basketball. I was on a dean's list. I mean, we talking about having to manage studying books, mm-hmm. meeting new people, playing basketball, traveling on the road, taking exams, taking tests. Like it was a lot to manage and deal with and juggle. And so I think that that does play a huge part in business because one, in order to play basketball at a division one level, because I played at Southern Illinois University, you got to be good and you got to be competitive. And so that competitive nature spilled over into my business world and the person that you see today. Like I had one of my mentees, she texted me this morning. She said, she said, man, coach, you got to be off some kind of vitamins and minerals. She said, because you just be on go. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like I'm gonna go because it's like, I just want to win. I just don't want to lose. I don't care what's going on in life. I just want to win. Like I remember during the pandemic seeing you, like going crazy, and I'm like, yo, I just need to get like, I just need to just get in the game to where people notice me. And my goal is to compete with bro. And then at, at some point, eventually passed. And, like, and it wasn't nothing against you. Nope. It was all just like, I'm, that's just how competitive I am. Yeah. So I hope somebody watching this has that same competitive nature. Say, well, I got I to gotta be Dion one day. And I got to, you know what I'm saying? So that's just the competitive nature in me. And that spilled over into business because anything that I put my name to and I attach myself to, I just want to win. Bro, you know what's so, what's, it's, it's so heavy and dope about that, what you just said, right? Is that some people look at, one of, one of the things I always say is that, I don't want to be in a position where other people come in. Like, I'm, I'm competitive. Like mm-hmm. you just said, you got to have a competitive nature and you got to be, it's, it's just the belly of the beast when yeah. you want to get out here because you have to want to win. Yep. You got to be want to be great. And it does not mean, oh, yeah, um, I want, I want, I man, I see what you did. Like, I'm trying, I'm trying to do that plus more. Mm-hmm. It does not mean that when you say that, that, okay, well, I don't want you to be great. Mm-hmm. I don't want you to do your thing. Because I want to be that. No, I want to be great. I don't have to stop you. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things that I always look at is that when, when people come up and I see people doing it, like when I, I met and we were at that ClickFunnels, and I said, bro, it's inspiring seeing what y'all doing. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, like it keep me going. Yeah. It keep me pushing. Shit, yeah. niggas is out here. Good. That mean what? That mean, okay, let's work. Yep. Because you need yep. people to look to the side and be like, oh, that's what you're going to do. <laughs> I seen what you did. Okay. It, it, it's, it's motivation. But I think it's the competitiveness, right? Yeah. Because people, I want people to realize, like, in that, in that sense, though, with that competitiveness, a lot comes with it. Because people can look at it and go, oh, everybody can't interpret somebody else playing ball. Like, KD, KD can look across at LeBron. When we're on the court together, it's game time. Does not mean when we get off that we not friends. For sure. For me, I look at everybody come up and I, I show love, mm-hmm. right? Like, when mm-hmm. with Smitty, everybody, Herm, Bob, like, yeah. All my mentees, whether you're my program or not, when people are in this space because we're pushing the envelope. Yep. And what I realize is that the greater that they become, the greater I become. Yep. Because then they start finding out, finding out things and I'll be like, yo, I'm, I learn from you. Yep. I don't just, yep. I ain't the guy, the creator of all. Yeah. And, um, but what you said, that competitiveness, right? Yeah. So that's one thing to help you become great. But bro, one thing that people don't talk about is the downside to the competitiveness. Mm-hmm. For me, I want to be great, and I can't accept anything less than. <laughs> and it's hard mm-hmm. to be around people or look at people and have conversations, even loved ones and family. Yeah. Because it's like, like, how you okay with that? Mm-hmm. And it's like, I'm the example. Mm-hmm. Now, you said you're the first one in your family to go to college and graduate. Yep. Then you become, I assume, the first millionaire. Yes. Now you go and it's like, well, you made it, so you saved the family. And it's like, I can't. And it's like, well, you got money. But it's like, it doesn't work like that. Mm-hmm. But that competitiveness is like, well, why you don't got that? Mm-hmm. What's like, that's what that's like being the first in the family and going through that. Like, what does that look like for you on your side? It's tough. And it's crazy because this is wealth therapy and it's like, I feel like even at this point in my life, just being transparent, I feel like I need to go to some kind of therapy and counseling session to deal with that. Mm. Because, you know, like you said, when you make it, um, everybody has their own thought process and assumptions that, all right, so now since you made it, then now you're going to just give everybody the money. It's like, I'm not even going to lie. When I was younger, 
and I envision myself, let's just say, well, I envision somebody who has a million dollars at that time, that was a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But when you make millions of dollars, it's, you, it's really not a lot of money when you start to do the things that you always wanted to do, like buy your house and buy your cars, and then now you got to take care of your mom. And then when you look up, you be like, yo, after taxes, it's like, it's not the same. The million ain't the million. It's not the million ain't million like y'all think it is. And so when you got everybody in your family saying, hey, I'm short on my mortgage, I'm short on my rent. Now, everybody, now everybody's short. And they've always been short, but now they short coming to you with their shortness. Mm -hmm. And so and that so that's that's tough to deal with. Um, and it's like even through that, what else for me has been tough to deal with is not only navigating family and friends who have completely abandoned me, because they they say to me, they say, Well, man, you know, you got this money and now, you know, it seemed like you changed. Well the reality is that I actually have. I'm not the same person. I can't I couldn't possibly be the same person that I am that I was 20, 30 years, 15 years ago and accomplish and achieve the things that I'm accomplishing today. So I have changed, but not necessarily for the negative, but technically for the good. Mm -hmm. But then, like you said, what comes with that is people not, you can't see out of eye no more. You're losing friendships, you're losing family members. Your phone ain't ringing from family and friends like that no more. Mm -hmm. Then for me in the past couple of years, I lost my biological father. So it was like, I never got time to spend with him. And then it's like, now I'm, I'm, I'm a multimedia and I never got to like give to him and spend time with him and really get to know him. It was just like, I knew of him, but I only seen him like four or five times in my life. So it's like, now that I'm this ultra successful person that everybody is, is clapping for and stuff like that. Some of the people that, you know, ultimately mean the most to you, you can't share those moments with them. So it's like, it's a lot to navigate and deal with when you really achieve success. So it's like, like you saying, it's like, we unlocking stuff. Yeah, financial freedom. But it's like, as we unlocking financial freedom, we're unlocking a lot of other doors too. Bro. <clears throat> you 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 said a mouthful because you don't people don't realize I tell people I say you're gonna lose family mm -hmm. and you lose great relationships with people that you got certain bonds and attachments to that I can only lean on you for certain things but they starting to get compromised now mm -hmm. because of this of yep. what I wanted for me yeah then I went out and got for me and now it's like well I want better for you but mm -hmm. even if you don't want better okay but don't make your problems and your burdens become mine. Yep. And then you start to look at me funny and treat me weird. Yep. Like I'm not the same person. Like I'm, for me, I'm a dog. So it's like, look, I got a real, like, it is like a fuck you attitude. Yep. And, and then you, so when you start saying things behind my back mm -hmm. and we hear about it and people don't, but people are like, yo, I want to be successful. But it's like, yo, they're like, yo, you act funny now. It's like, nah. How you got you got behind my back, not knowing everybody wants the opportunity to tell the bag mm -hmm. a secret. Yep. Yep. Tell the bag, get to, get closer to the bag to build a better relationship with the bag. Let yep. them know that it's a snake or somebody feeling some kind of mm -hmm. way. Everybody want to tell mm -hmm. people, and I don't owe you. I don't owe you an explanation of what I heard and what I know that you said and did. Yeah. And then it's just like, well, why you don't fuck with me a little more? You in your soul don't fuck with me, so it don't even matter. I yeah. don't even gotta release it. Yep. I just got to deal with it and just be like, damn, this stuff come with it. And it's like, I'm here now and I'm out here to go and I can't even look and, and stay in that realm. I can't stay in that world of trying to fix it because it takes me out of my, my, my dog and my competitiveness nope. because it's niggas like him 500 out here that's going to keep going. I ain't got time to spend six months in counseling to work on this relationship mm -hmm. that does not benefit me mm -hmm. financially, does not contribute yep. to my family, yep. my kids, none of that. This is only going to go between us emotionally. Mm -hmm. You know what? I got to cut it. If not, I'm going to get left. Yep. And I'm yep. on, I only can run this race yep. one time. Yep. Life, the life race does not happen again. I can't get off the track, come back and say, oh, yeah, I'm going to run it again. I can't stop. Nope. And that's, that's, that's crazy because I don't think a lot of people like. I'll say this. I, I don't want like people are going to listen to this conversation. Here's what I'll say. One thing that high level people and very successful people don't have time for is we don't have time for low level conversations. So let's so I'm just I'm giving this people for this for an example. If you have said something bad or you have, let's just say, gone against somebody that is successful and they don't acknowledge you, it's not that they don't care about you. It's just that we don't care enough to indulge and waste our time in those type of conversations because we've grown past that. So that's where I'm at with it. When I hear somebody in my family that say, oh, man, you know, he think he all that. I just I, I'm, it's out the window and then I just know how to handle you. And it's the same thing like with people who used to look up to me and say, oh, well, man, you know, like I see somebody doing some content and talk about, well, yeah, bro, doing this, doing that. And that stuff is. And then now all of a sudden you text me. 
if I don't reply, it's, it's, you know what I'm saying? It's like, so yep. it's a weird space for us too, because it's like, you know, we, we, we try to navigate so many different things and juggle so many different things at a time. Like today I was telling you my schedule, like I just did a radio interview. I'm here with you. I got to do a class. Then I got to do another radio interview. And it's like, I don't got time to be talking and gossiping it. That ain't my day ain't from the consistent none of that because it's gonna throw me off my square. Then that means that the next dude that I'm competing with or that I'm running with, he's not going to have a head start. I mean, I ain't got time for none of that. Yep. No, bro. sir. Bro, no. listen. That that and, and that's an important lesson for people to realize is that you don't gotta fight every battle and put every mm -hmm. fire out. Sometimes it's okay to let fires, you know, burn themselves down. For sure. And and it's okay to let that run. And that's one thing that's super important for people. Like, as y'all take anything, it's like, you look at people who become successful, it's like, yo, they allow the fires to burn. Mm. One thing I look at is this, like, you know, people get be in their feelings about me all the time. Mm -hmm. Everybody got some, some kind of feeling, but it'd be like, yo, how do you feel so entitled to me? Mm -hmm. like, 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 like somebody gave, gave me something and then they was mad because I ain't posted. Mm -hmm. Like, oh man, you ain't shot it out or, you know, put it on your Instagram or nothing. And it's like, First of all, um, I, I, I market and show love when I can, but understand I'm only one person. I yeah. only can market so much. Yeah. I'm only sharing so much. Yeah. And now you feel a way, but it's like, I, I didn't tell you, you didn't pay me to do anything, you know? And it's like, everybody wants something like, well, let me just have a conversation with you about business. And it's like, bro, for you to go from college and, and, and being, you know, extraordinary in college, being on the dean's list, like performing at the highest level, you, you take those experiences, you take those trials because you went through hard things there, you went through great things there, um, go on, play ball, then go into the, to the, work, to the workforce, yep. selling cell phones and stuff like that, being the rank there, yep. making it to the top there, yep. then saying, you know what, I'm going into entrepreneurship yep. and making it to the top there, Man. get to a point now and say, okay, I got all of these life lessons and experiences now. People look and go, you're, how old are you right now? You just turned 40. Just turned 40. You 40 years old. And somebody out there like, man, I'm 40. I should be able to do what you do. But they don't realize that you're not 40. You're 40 in a physical age. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to execution, mm -hmm. when it comes to high level operating mm -hmm. at the highest level and competing at, at a top tier level and, and holding yourself to the standard, like, yo, I'm, 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 I'm 20 years in here. I'm coming from college where I had to compete. I'm Come not on. in high school where it's given. Yeah. I, I did this in college. I held myself to this standard in college. Yep. So, and I, and I always challenge people and ask yourself, like, well, how old are you when it comes to business and entrepreneurship? Mm -hmm. How old are you when it comes to holding yourself accountable and yep. holding yourself to a high level yep. of um, execution? And if, you're, if you have not been doing it that long, don't expect my results and it's okay. Yeah. Because I can pass some of these, some things off to you. Mm -hmm. I can pass some lessons off to you. I can point you and help steer you on what not to do. Yeah. But don't think that, because sometimes when people get inferior or they feel like, man, you got that. And it's, it's kind of like a, um, a thing of like, it's intimidating. And it's like, man, it's scary. Yeah. And, but they don't realize like, nah, I make it look easy. Mm -hmm. but I've been practicing. Yes. I'm conditioned yeah. for it. Yeah. And yeah. so when your mentee say, yo, how you running like that? You're like, yeah. I'm, I'm conditioned for yeah. it. But so when you need help and I see you, I can tell you, it's like we're having a trainer. When you help mentees and you help because you have a lot of people in business. And when you look at them and you go, as a trainer, I can go in the gym and work out mm -hmm. by myself. But when the trainer is there, they can look and be like, your technique is off. Yep. You're going to blow a shoulder. You're going to yep. pull your shoulder out of You know yep. what? You need to lift. Um, you you got more reps. Mm -hmm. You thought you was done, but nah, nah. You got five more. You know, you matter of fact, you you can lift a little bit more. Yeah. Or you fatiguing out. Stop. Your form is getting bad. Mm -hmm. You about to hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. These are these are important factors, but it comes from the experience that I've been through. I I've, I've done it. And so with you now, when you look at the people that you help, like they go, man, you forty years old. You young. Like. You, you gain success this young, like, yo, what's, like, I know I can do it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it look like that, but yeah. it ain't that. Yeah, it's like, it's like um, I got some peers that, some 25, 26, some 30, 32, and they got no kids. Like, I got a wife, I got three kids, and a mama that I take care of full time. Mm -hmm. And they got no kids, and they trying to figure out why is it that my performance is, like, I'm, I can run laps around them. 
And reason being is, like you said, I'm just conditioned. Like, I've been doing this for so long. Like, I've been a part of a winning team since college basketball, since high school basketball. I've been knowing how to be coachable and be a team player. Then, like you said, I went into, I went into the work world. You know what I'm saying? I got a job. I had a guy, I've been having a job since 2009. So when I was at the job, they were teaching me how to do project analysis, strategic thinking. They, they were having me do all of this stuff. So it was like, for me, I've been doing this since 2009. I've been training people, developing people, coaching people, leading people, doing presentations. I've been doing all of this stuff since 2009, running stores, yeah, like hiring people, firing people. So when you look and you say, dang, like I remember, I remember my bro, my very first interview was um, on Million Dollars of a Game. And I remember having a conversation with Wallow and he was like, man, you ready for this, this, this stage? And it's like, it's a big stage. Mm. I said, bro, I've been doing this for a long time. I said, nobody just don't know who I am yet. I said, yeah. but I've been doing this. So when people be like, how you talk so well? How you can speak in front of a lot of people? I've been doing this since 2000. Like, I've been doing this for a long time. I got the conditioning. I got the rep. So like you said, it's kind of you trying to compare yourself, your day one to my day 2,368. Like, bro, I've been doing this for so long. Mm. To speak on the camera, that's easy for me. To speak in front of 500,000, 2,000 people, I've been doing this for so long. For, to me, I am in my happy place when I get to speak. Yeah. Being like now, now hold on now. Now my wife, you better not even try that with her. She ain't with none of that. She ain't finna talk to nobody. That ain't mm -hmm. what she do. Like mm -hmm. she wanna be leave me alone. I'm gonna sit in the back. I'm gonna clap for you, husband. Good job. But talking to people, dealing with people, I don't wanna do none of that. When I go to these events and I'm talking, I'm pretty sure you deal with it too. My yeah. wife is like, I'm over there. I'll be over there when you get done. You see? That you see that? You see what I'm saying? Yep. Like that's just the way it is. But but me and you, it's like we were. That's a part of our DNA. That's a part of who we are. Mm -hmm. So again, if you want to get to the point to where, like you said, we can only teach people so much. So if a person wants to get to this level, you just have to just, just study and say, okay, well, what are they doing? Why do they do it? Because a lot, of, a lot of my performance is not necessarily the work work. A lot of it is just my strategic ability to think and say, should I go on that podcast? Ooh, no, nah, I don't want to go on there. But that one right there, I think that that will be good for my brand. I think that will bring great credibility. And because it's like we get a lot of offers, but there are a lot of stuff that people don't see that I turn down as well because that's just not good for business. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want to go over there and y'all doing that over there and then that's not going to be good for my brand and credibility. But I'll do this over here. I'll go on this run. I'll do this and I'll talk to these people, but I'm not over there talking to the people. So it's a mixture of what we are doing, but people teach you two things, what to do and what not to do. So y'all got to pay attention to what not to do as well. Bro. See what I'm saying? Hey, hey, man, you, you just hit two things. I want to go into that understanding what to do, what not to do. The key thing you said right there is that I think a lot of people don't think. Mm -hmm. They just look at actions and they just do it and don't understand the process of why. Nope. And why do some things and why not do some things. And learning from, I did some things I shouldn't have did. I, I was like, yeah, I shouldn't have did that, mm -hmm. but I learned. Mm -hmm. But so, and this allows me to think and process my decisions. Yes. All from my experiences. Mm -hmm. But you also said, my wife is totally different. Mm -hmm. in, in life, I think that it's a, it's a common factor and people don't like it. Married men are more successful than single <laughs> men. Maybe I say that. Right? And they be like, well, it is. And, and it's, a, it's statistic fact. Mm -hmm. Married men are more successful than single men. Um, but picking your partner is people think like a lot of dudes be feeling like, man, I, my girl got to be like me. I want to go get her, this, that, and the third. And like you said, it's crazy because I seen it in church yesterday. Mm. There's Daniel's wife. She was like, I've been here all, I've been here some hours. She was like, I don't run like him. He, he can go. She's about to check out, wasn't she? Yep. Yeah. She was, it yeah. was, it's like, you know, I've yeah. been here since 8 a.m. Yeah. 6 a.m. She said, well, I did the 8 a.m. service. I did the 11 service. She like, we got to do one more, but I could see she was like, I'm, I'm tired. And yeah. all I seen was my wife, right? Yep. You see at the event. I would have seen, yeah. She yeah. in the back, she's sitting to the side. Mm -hmm. And I laugh because it's not that we're the same. We don't have to be the same person, yeah. right? But one thing that I do, what I do say is dope is that I told my wife the other day, I said, look, you don't do like, you can socialize with people. I said, but you don't do what I do. You can't do what I do. Yeah. And I said, but it's not a knock at you. Yeah. Because sure. I can't do what you do. Cool. Facts. Yeah. I can't sit. You can sit with one person 
she could find somebody in the room and sit there <laughs> and they can have a conversation and they exchange energy in life. Yeah. And I'm like, you sit there and talk to that one person. You you find somebody, y'all connect and y'all build. And they'd be like, damn, like y'all didn't share life stories and moments and, and y'all really just build. Yeah. I said, I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I can't sit and go, one-on-one, we finna just sit here and I'ma talk and mm-hmm. and I and we just going I can go and work a room. Yeah. I can get, I'm, I'm quick, interactive. I can deal with so many different energies and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But if I get to talk to somebody for so long, eventually I'm going to get into judging. And because I'm about action. Mm-hmm. And you're going to say something and I'm, I'm going to be like, that's that. And I'm, I'm going to start pulling things in. Yep. And it's going to be like, nah, this what, you know, mm, all right, bet. I'm over, I'm over this conversation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it'd be like, don't, I always tell people, the, one, the last thing you want is my attention. Mm. You can take my advice and, and my guidance. You don't want my attention. Mm. If I give you my attention, I pay attention to details. Mm. I'm on everything. Mm. I'm, 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 nah, you ain't doing this. Like, I get mentees and like my, my mastermind members and stuff, and it's like, I'm following you. I turn your post notifications on. I'm watching what you're saying. I'm watching what you're doing. Now I start to see what you're liking and stuff. And I'm like, now nah, I'm, I'm on you. Because mm-hmm. now I'm here. And it's like, man, like you really be, like I pay attention to details. And yeah. the last thing you want is me looking because I'm like, I'm looking at your actions. Yeah. I'm looking at the, the, the things you say, the, the places you go, who you with. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And like mm-hmm. all of these things matter. But I say like, I'm good. I'm on the surface. I can help you. I'm, I'm there with a lot of people. And we can do exchange good energy. I'm always going to show love. But I'm not great with that mm. one-to-one because I'm like, I'm that competitiveness, that dog, and my thinking, mm. my experiences, I'm automatically putting it there. I think, I think you got a problem like me too. Like, it's not that I hate one-on-one, it's just that I dislike it because I know that what you asked me, 12 to 20 other people got the same question. So I would hate to just sit here with you for 20, 30 minutes and answer your question when I could technically reach a broader audience of people and help more people all at one time. Cause mm-hmm. I know 20 other people about to walk up to me and say the same thing like, hey bro, tell me bro, what's the, what's the thing I do to, to you know, improve my marketing? It's like, dang, everybody else from that. Bro, just everybody sit down in the audience and let me just speak to everybody. Say, <laughs> or you know what? And that's why I walk around, I tell people all the time on content, I always got a mic on and yeah. my cameraman there when I'm around people. Yeah. Because whatever you ask me, I know it. I, you got an interaction with me? Yeah. Cool. Then let me record it because I'm going to go put it on a clip. I'm going to go put it on a short. I'm going to go put it on, on, on social media. Yeah. Me answering your question because a lot of people got that same question. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's one thing. Um, so, but now when you go into business, like how you end up, <laughs> how you end up in credit? You know what's crazy? Um, man, God led me into credit because I started my entrepreneurial journey in 2016 when I left my job. Mm-hmm. And when I left there, I did, I was doing life insurance and retirement planning for three years. So I was, mm-hmm. so I was still in like the financial literacy realm, but it just wasn't the credit niche. Mm-hmm. It was more like life insurance and retirement plan. So I did that for three years. I made a couple hundred thousand dollars doing it. I was doing knocking and cold calling. Crazy. Mm-hmm. Crazy, bro. We talking about from yeah. 2016 to like 2019, right at the beginning of 2020, right, right around the pandemic. Mm-hmm. I was literally calling people on the phone, scheduling appointments, going to their house, knocking on doors, driving my car around Chicago, bro. Like, I don't know. That's. Looking back on it, I don't even know. I don't know what I was thinking. That's crazy as hell. Yeah. Um, but it, it was like, even back then, like when I got in business, internet was popping, but it wasn't like how it is now where people will buy stuff over the phone or like buy stuff over like a Zoom because the pandemic made that possible. Like now aunties and uncles will get on a Zoom call and buy stuff. Yeah. But back then when I was coming like 2015, 2016 entrepreneurship, it was hard. That was like a rough, rough patch. Mm. So then right around 2019, 2020, um, I got an opportunity because I started praying and I was like, I really want something different for myself. And so I told God, because in that three year time frame when I was doing life insurance, I wasn't listening to no other opportunity. I was blinded. Like selling life insurance, when they do this whole MLM marketing, multi level marketing and stuff, like you just get blinded to falling into like they trap. It's like, yeah. it's, it's that or nothing. So I wasn't open to nothing else. And then I, was, I started praying. And I'm like, God, I want, I want to do something different. Like I'm getting burnt out doing this. And then in 2020, I got the opportunity. I met my guy um, out in Cali. I was, I was building my family a new house and then in Indiana and then uh, my loan originator, his son was selling solar out in Cali. And okay. he was like, my son been doing this for like 12 years. He was, he was like, he making millions. You need to get with him. I'm like, all right. So I connected with his son, flew out to Cali um, and I got an opportunity to start my own solar company, partner with his company. And I did that for like t- about a year and a half, two years. And it was, it was good money, 
But it was it was it was bad from a customer service perspective because the people didn't understand solar in the Midwest. Okay. We didn't get as much mm. daylight. It was a hard transition trying to get people to understand solar panels on their house. It was crazy, bro. But we had success. I made I made a couple million dollars from that in a couple years. Um, my take home from that, I thought paying my team installs and stuff like that was probably about maybe close to a half a million. So we was doing we was doing decent. But the problem that we had was that customer service was bad because my install team wasn't the most efficient at that time frame trying to figure out. Then it was like, when you get solar, you got to go through all this permitting process. So we, had, we were trying to figure that out. We, I'm sorry, brand new logistics to just a whole company and, and the whole aspect of solar, period, that was rough. Mm -hmm. So then we go from that. And what happened was, is we had like maybe 20, 20 to 30 percent of our people who was planning to go solar that got qualified from a credit perspective. So in order to go solar, they had to have a 650 credit score or higher. It was a no money down program. They had to pay no money. They, it was zero money down. We came out, put the solar panels on. They just started paying the panels off. Yeah. That's how it worked. But if you didn't have a 650 mm. higher, you couldn't go. So I was losing money. So I said, you know what I'm going to do? I am going to start a credit repair company inside of this solar company. So we're going to repair their credit, add trade lines, do all of this stuff to boost their credit up so that they're going to solar so I get this big bag. Yeah. That was yeah. the whole plan. But then what happened was is I started this credit repair company in the middle of the pandemic and everybody start so i'm chasing people for solar but all the credit people just start flooding like y'all need my credit need my credit i'm like yo so i'm making like forty thousand a month solar forty thousand a month doing credit i'm like nah but i'm over here chasing people for solar knocking on doors we was knocking on doors wearing masks i'm like nah i said yo this solar stuff ain't working out anyway <laughs> i'm just gonna go ahead and do the credit stuff because that is organically like i'm like god just telling me like drop the solar go just credit. So I dropped the solar went credit. And that was in like 2020. So I really only been like doing hardcore credit since 2020. Like we, gotcha. bro, this 2024. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is four years of what people are seeing. I've been doing this stuff that I've been doing. Now, get, now granted, I've been an entrepreneur for a long time. But sales, them skill sets that you develop yes. is crazy. Yes. Where you win at. Because yes. you did a lot of skill set developing and building yes. to be where you at. And it just transitioned over. Yes. But you wasn't on the internet. I wasn't on so the internet. So then at you all. had to get on the internet. Yes. But but look, me getting on the internet in like 2020, it was like, it was kind of like, it was it was the easiest thing ever because all I had to do is press post. I'm like, all I gotta do is hit record, say something cool, say something that makes sense, and then post it, and I can make money. I said, oh no, nah, they, oh, they got the game for no, oh no, y'all y'all tripping. Cause you gotta think, bro. I come from cold calling, like mm -hmm. calling people to set appointments, like it then going on knocking on doors. Like if I couldn't get to your house, I'm going to your neighbor's house. Hey, how you doing, Marcus? I just next door with Mr. John. John said you wanted to hear this financial literacy incident information that I share with him that you'll find beneficial. You yeah. got 10 or 20 minutes with your wife. Can I sit down at the coffee table and go over this information? This is what I was literally saying, bro. And mm -hmm. they like, 20 minutes? Sure, cool. I'm in the crib. I'm kissing babies. I'm petting dogs. I got people buying life insurance, bro. The hardest yeah. thing to ever sell. The mm -hmm. hardest thing to ever say, I'm like, yo, I got a mortgage I got to pay, all of that. Mm -hmm. And like what really, what really made sense to me when, because this, it was a full circle moment for me when I really started to like get deep into credit is when I really dropped soul and I got into credit, I had to realize that in 2016, when I left my job, the only way that I was able to become an entrepreneur is I leveraged $40,000 in credit. Mm -hmm. I had two American Express I had to discover. It was 40,000 limit across some three cards. I used that to pay all of my bills, put food on the table for like seven months, bro. I didn't have no money. Like I, mm. like I didn't, like I didn't, have, like I'm talking about. I'm liquidating credit cards. I'm paying card notes. Liquidating credit. I'm paying mortgages. Using plastic. I'm, bro. I'm out here. I'm getting to it. Yeah. But that's yeah. all. I, I didn't have nothing else. And I had to realize, like, yo, credit is crazy powerful. Like, I'm like, y'all, nah, this is this is really lit. And so, educating the people and really understanding. I, man, I'm smart. When I say, stayed up two, three, four, five o'clock in the morning, just educating myself studying the material. I'm like, no, yo, I got to be the best. And that's when I started seeing your material because I was looking up credit, learning credit. Mm -hmm. And then you just start coming across my screen. I'm like, oh, no, nah. like, whoever this dude is, he got it. But not <laughs> for long, though. Like, I'm on, I'm on that. Like, I'm, I'm coming. You know what I'm saying? Like, so mm -hmm. that was, that's how I got into the credit space. Like, literally, that's how I got into credit. Like, mm -hmm. it was crazy. Bro, listen. And so then, now you get into credit. Mm -hmm. Then you stumble it because you create, you became the face of, like with me, I came into credit and it was credit, I'm doing manufacturer spending, trade lines. Yep. I kind of own that space. Yep. Everybody finds a lane. It's like, oh, y'all ain't over here. And I, I see people 
like Herm with business funding, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. teaching funding and stuff, and Herm just business funding. And I was like, you can't get the business funding without personal. <laughs> you need both. He's yeah. like, yep. Yep. <laughs> business funding. And he owned it. Yeah. And I was like, I watched him and I go, yep. Yep. You own the space. Mm-hmm. Now this is when you say business funding, you think about, you think about that. patient CEO. Mm-hmm. That's what you got it. Yep. Yep. Then comes this goddamn Metro 2 guy. <laughs> we hear Metro 2, this, that, a third, but yeah. you came in and you own Metro 2, though. Yeah. And it's a difference when we come into business and we, 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 we learn it, but it's like, did you identify, like, people ain't really own this year or they haven't been exposed to it? This ain't, like, why, like, what made you go and, like, how did you pivot into yeah. that? Because it's like, yo, how do you... As a person, like you got to take a one a risk. Mm-hmm. You got family, you got kids, mm-hmm. and you like, okay, I'm about to do. I'm making money with this, yeah. And then it's like, okay, I got to brand it now. Yeah, you yeah. Branding and marketing come in a place yeah. that you've yeah. been great with. That's that's really what it was. Um, and what I'll say is, I'm not a hypocrite. I've never told nobody to do nothing that I ain't personally did. Yeah. So what happened for me was when I was doing credit repair and all, we was making good money, um, but I was staying up to two, three o'clock in the morning trying to do factory dispute, bro. Like, eyes burning. I'm like, people waiting on their results. I'm like, yo, I'm like, this can't be, it's got to be something better. So I just went on a deep rampage of just digging. Yeah. And I'm like, hold on, Metro 2, credit compliance. I'm like, whoa, yo, what's this, yo? So and I'm like, I'm just digging, I'm learning, I'm educating. I'm like, let me start doing that. So I started using Metro 2. I'm like, yo, these results is crazy. Yeah. And I'm like, why ain't nobody talking about Metro 2? Mm-hmm. And like you said, I was willing to take the risk. And I love that because it was, like, you got to think. I had never really knew nobody who had sold life insurance. Like, like ain't no, there ain't, ain't no 1-800 number to really just call and get life insurance. You mm-hmm. feel like, people, you got to know somebody, somebody going, from your family going to sell you some primary, but it's got to be something like that for you to get life insurance. You see what I'm saying? That's a fact. So I was, I was like, so it is the same thing with life insurance. I'm like, yo, ain't nobody doing this. Let me do life insurance. Because you got to think, when I left my job, I'm like, what the hell I'm going to do to replace 130000 a year? I don't know what the hell to do. Yeah. So I said, so I had met a guy, and he was like, I said, well, how much money do you make? He said, yeah, I cleared like 120 last year. I'm like, doing what? Mm-hmm. He like, life insurance sales. I'm like, oh, yo, I'm like, I ain't never heard nobody doing that. Let me do that. Mm-hmm. Then I said, cool, I'm praying for something else. I'm like, solar. I'm like, ain't nobody doing solar. They was like, who the heck is selling solar? Who the heck is you to sell solar? I'm like, I'm selling solar. Yeah. Again, another, another something that ain't nobody doing. Mm-hmm. Then I stubbed on Metro 2. I'm like, yo, ain't nobody doing this either. Yep, I'm going to own that. And I remember when I really like started pushing it hard. I remember Kenny Conwell hit me. He said, bro. He said, I was hearing about Metro too. He said, but I ain't never seen nobody like own it. Like he's like, you actually, like you own, like you coined it. You've you've put it out there. You mm-hmm. you really took the risk to put everybody on something that you really didn't know if it was really gonna hit or not. He was like, and it's hidden, bro. He's like, I just wanna call and give you your flowers. And I was just like, bro, I'm, I was willing to take that risk. And so it's been a crazy ride because even still now, like I get on calls and nobody, nobody know. Like yeah. ain't nobody really onto it. And so what happens is, is when you can own a lane and when you can coin something and when you can really put marketing behind it, you can really go hard with it, it will pay you very well. It will pay you very well because essentially you are putting everybody onto something that has never been discussed, never been talked about. And so they, so we, so a light bulb go off and say, yo, if I can do that, maybe then I can have that success that he's talking about because I've never tried it. And so, yeah, mm-hmm. bro, like it was, it was a risk, but as we can see, it was worth it though. Not and, and but but owning it. Okay, so then a little bit of marketing. So then when you start going hard at it, when you mm-hmm. say like what's some of your the things that you had to go through with marketing because on the side is that a lot of people think that, oh man, just do paid ads. Yeah. Or nah. podcasts. Nah, nah, nah. And it's like, bro, we go through people don't realize how much we go through in business. Yeah. Um with advertisement, doing things, don't know if it's gonna work, how it's gonna go, right? Yeah. I look at like me doing stuff. I remember I went and um, <laughs> I got all my Louis Vuitton boxes. Mm. Every single box, I remember every that bag. <laughs> <laughs> you put it on the McLaren or something. Yep. I, I remember that. I remember and that. And I put it on the McLaren. Yep. Boy, when I tell you, I was playing, right? We was done shooting, and I said, wait, let's do one more. The sun was going down, we out in front of my house. Did it. Man, it went crazy. crazy. And I'm like, man, I look and I would see the ads, but we would we, we running so many different ones, but it had so many impressions yeah. on all the different ads. And I'm like, yeah, I was getting cooked. 
in them comments. Yeah. Yeah. But I was getting paid. Yes. In my pocket. Yes. Like yes. I was getting paid. That ad mm -hmm. made me millions of dollars. Yeah. And I'm like, sometimes it's just that creativeness, but a lot of people will look and be like, oh man, they cooking them for that. Like, that wasn't a good idea. Yeah. Somebody told me the other day, like, yo, um, can you admit now that that was corny when you took that picture, right? <laughs> and I went to their page and I said, you got 24 posts. Man. I made millions. I made millions off of what you would call corny. So can you admit that it's, it, can you admit that being cool is broke nigga shit? Nah, for real. Like, y'all be, you scared to post, you wanna have your page look a yeah. certain way, and it's like, you get no money. Nah. That, that being, being cool is broke nigga shit. Mm -hmm. Like, if you don't understand, like, I'm willing to do and get out and, and, and be a human being, yeah. make a mistake, oh, that a, whatever. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out how to grow my brain and how to get some money. Yeah. I ain't trying to be cool and, Oh yeah, you gotta keep it keep it saucy. You keep it saucy over there and don't try to extend it. <laughs> and, and and let me know how it worked for you with them twenty four posts or rappers. I be seeing rappers. They be like they got one post. Nah. And they be like, what? Who you hiding from? What you hiding from? The money? Nah. It's like yo, crazy. you gotta engage. Yeah, I, I tell people all the time like if, if you don't post, you don't like money. Then that's mm -hmm. crazy. Like, yeah, I, I I can't get with the 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 your page should be aesthetically a certain type of way. I just post, bro. I just, whatever I feel, however I want to, whenever I want to, I just post. I'm not worried about who uh, don't like it or who going to just be displeased about it. People run, I run across people all the time. They be like, bro, you post too much. And I be like, I mean, I make a lot of money, though. And, then, and, and, and nine out of ten of them, I make more money than them. So y'all can say what y'all want to say. That's cool. But you, you should probably try what I'm doing. Yeah. Now, my likes ain't 20,000 all of the time and, and 1,300 comments. But guess what, bro? I'm still getting paid every time I post. And people yeah, don't man. realize it's the consistency, right? Yep. I, I look at it. So I be doing stuff. Um, I know when I, I can go on a campaign and on a run mm -hmm. to grow my following. Yeah. And I can go on a campaign on a run to grow my sales. Yep. It's two different campaigns and runs. Yeah. When I want to reach a lot of people, I'll post frequent and I'll post all different, all kinds of formats of content. Mm -hmm. When I'm going on, 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 I'm on sales, I'm on one topic base. Yes. And I'm only here. See, if I want to go reach, I'm going lifestyle. Yep. I'm going um, quotes. I'm going um, things at nighttime. I'm posting certain things. I'm posting toxic stuff that people yep. are going to share. The relationship so, stuff. Yep. The relationship stuff. Mm -hmm. Toxic little, little, little disses and yep. jabs at people. Like, it's certain things that goes wide. Mm -hmm. Then I go narrow. Yep. When it's time, I'll go here. Okay, cool. I look on my account and it'd be like, yo, I remember it'd be like, yo, you reach, um, last month I was like, I reached 600,000 people. Yeah. And I was like, damn, that's low. Let me check my joint. Let me see what I get. Be because when I take off, it'll be two, three million. That's it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, when I wanted to go, it's like, yo, you reached two, three million people last month. But when I'm going narrow, it's going here. But then my story views was on 60,000. Tough. You see what I'm saying? And yeah. it's like knowing how to move in this um oh yeah see that joint <clears throat> yeah we see po we popping two million two million you see what i'm saying yeah that's that's when you when you running and posting you reach two million people but what i what i look at is this is and i say that though is that coming into it um people don't realize like it's not easy mm -hmm. you you got to have a video you got a video team you got people running with you um but what makes you what like what's some of the things that you adapted in that like some, you know when you when you talk about it, it's like damn i had to learn the hard way with this like these things i had to learn yeah i think that um i think getting to the point that i'm at i realized that what's and this may sound crazy to a lot of people is that making millions of dollars actually isn't as hard as i thought it was i realized that i was working harder when i was broke and i and i worked less as as the more and more money that i make and so I had to adapt to, to move away from a poverty-like mindset. I always thought that one, if I don't do it, it's not gonna get done. And two, if I don't do some work, some money ain't getting made. That's just mm -hmm. what I thought. Mm -hmm. Whereas now, I just, I just, if I have a great idea, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to domains.google.com. I'm gonna make sure that URL is available. I'm gonna purchase that joint. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get the LLC incorporated and I'm gonna start the process and I'm gonna just go. Yeah. 
I didn't used to think like that. Like I used to be like, okay, well, let me, what do I got to do? How much money I got to spend? How is this? Gonna? Like I used to just think my way into poverty. Mm. Now I just think and just actually grow rich because now it's like, it ain't a whole lot of work that goes into making money. It's just the idea. And you got to actually, what, what makes the money is the execution. Yeah. It ain't the, it ain't the, it ain't the work and what got to be done. No, bro. You can hire the people that's going to get the work done. You got to just actually execute on the idea. Stop letting the idea sit here mm-hmm. because you holding yourself back. I tell people all the time, the enemy is the enemy. Like you just hold yourself back. Yeah. If you could just get past you and, and just go and do it without thinking, oh, it got to be perfect. Like I don't give a damn about no haircut. Like, bro, if, if my barber couldn't have cut my hair, couldn't have, I couldn't have shaved today, I still would have been here sitting on the couch with you ugly and all. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. I got to get it in. Like, I, I have to get it in. I ain't worried about being perfect. You got to have to. You, you know you, what I'm saying? But the audacity, right? You got to have the audacity to say, I, I can hire people. You know, people don't think that I can hire people. Oh, no, that's crazy. Think about it, right? It, that's like you, you say things and that shit be flowing easy and I get it. But average person don't think, yo, man, I'm just going to go hire some people. Mm-mm. It's like, huh? Like, well... I'm gonna pay them. How much? And it's like they don't realize, like, the, but with actions, with work, like you have to go do things, and you hire people to help you as soon as you get motion. But people think off the time, often that if I go make money, it's mine. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the biggest things I always tell people is like, yo, when you in business, it ain't your money. Mm. When you understand that that the business makes money, it's not yours. You then have to reinvest it back into your business. Mm. And it was one of the hard things that I had to learn because. I remember I'm having like one one employee. I'm like, I give you 10%, right? Yeah. I, I, and it's like, I didn't know. I'm like, yo, I, I give an employee and I, I bring him on, he closing deals. I say, I'm gonna give you 10%. Yeah. Right, I'm doing 20, 30,000 a month. I said, I give you 10%. Yeah. That's gonna be two, three thousand dollars a month. Mm-hmm. Like, just close these deals, yeah. right? He like, all right. Well, I start making 100,000 a month. After 10,000, I'm okay with that. Start making a million a month. I got a little uncomfortable. Oh, we. I said, <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> because now at this point, though, you're crippling the business. Man. See, now this doesn't make sense, but mm. I, I wasn't educated to think this way. Mm. So I said, yo, you're crippling the business, but I, we built this together. Yeah. But I was already, everything I was doing, I was already doing. I just needed somebody to allocate. Mm-hmm. And I was like, damn, I remember like, like, nah, because this is the business money. We need other people. But you're making enough for, for five or for, six. Yeah, for a whole, yeah. A whole eight, nine. And I ain't talking about 10% on like a, a yearly basis. I'm talking on a monthly basis. For sure. I'm doing a million a month. Yeah. Giving you a hundred. Yeah. Wait a minute. Tough. Wait, whoa, but I rolled it, yeah. right? And I go, success. Breed success. Mm-hmm. People around me, everybody get money. Yeah. yeah, I'm okay with that. So I start bringing other people in. Of course, we had to scale that down. But that's when I started learning. I go, I tell people now. Somebody say, Yo, I want to do a deal with you and just give me this percentage. Mm-hmm. And I go, Yeah, 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 yeah. That's fine. But we're gonna put a cap at what you'll max out at mm-hmm. because I will never pay somebody to do this more than if you come in at a percentage and let's just say you run uh, my ads. And I go, Okay, you are gonna run my ads? Yeah, I just want eleven percent. Yeah, 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 that's fine, but I'll give you 11%. But if I paid you a flat rate, I will only pay you five to 7,000 a month. So I'm, if you do 11% and we do a base, okay, if you take me to the moon, I'll do it, but I'm maxing you out at, at 20, 30,000 a month off mm-hmm. my ad rev. If mm-hmm. you can do, if you bring me in over 500,000, I'll mm-hmm. give you 30,000 a month. Or like you said, if you was making a million, then you could say, look, I'm already at a million. I'll pay you 11% on anything above the million because that means you got to turn me up. No, but I don't care because I'm going to go, I'm the dog that's going to be in the fight and mm-hmm. I know what I'm going to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I take it and go, and we go to 5 million and I give you 11% on 5 million, mm. that's four more mm. that I'm already on trajectory to do. Yes. You gotcha. see what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. And I'm like, so when I looked at it and I said, I start putting caps on people mm-hmm. where it's like, yeah, but this is the max that I'll pay you. Mm. I'm not going to pay you over. I got a guy um, helping me do, do uh, my podcast. And I was like, I'll pay you 10%, but I'm not going to go over $15,000 in a month. Mm-hmm. No matter what we start making, because yeah. I would not pay somebody that. Yeah. And I don't, I understand we're doing it together, but this yeah. is just the reality. 
that and, I wouldn't and do. And what's crazy about what you're saying is these are the type of conversations that as business owners, when you can have these type of deep, difficult conversations, the saying goes, the more difficult the conversation, the more wealthy you'll become. Like I was just having this conversation with Carter the other day and we were talking about, you know, paying people who do our marketing and our ads and stuff like that and mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to strategically pay them, like you said, without crippling the, the back end revenue of the business and paying this person too much when that, that funds could be allocated. Now, again, respectfully, we know that these people are bringing the traffic, but then also we have to be mindful of what's going on, what other people that we need. Like, we need to hire more people. Like, I'm in a position right now, we're going into 2025, I need three more people for my team. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I need to make sure that I have the funds and the money allocated to bringing on three new employees and being able to you know, pay them respectfully because then one issue that I know that you probably had too is when you have a team, they look at you like, okay, so yeah, we went from six figures to seven. We went from seven to eight. What we doing, boss? Is, is there a raise in there? That, you know, so it's like yeah. every, everybody want to make money. You know what I'm saying? Like money attract money. And so it's like everybody gets to looking and trying to figure mm -hmm. out are you taking care of them? And so the thing is, is I think that that's one of the most sensitive parts about running a business is making sure that you are hiring the right people, firing the right people, but at the same time, the people that you keep and having those A players, strategically paying them to the point to where they'll never want to leave. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I think A players are very important to a business. And people don't even be, they don't even know when they got A, B, or C players. And that's a whole nother <laughs> conversation. But it's like, I'm a, I'm a you know what I mean? I'm going to tell you one thing in business, though, in that a lot of people get misconstrued, like, when they look at us. And I know it for me, right? People go, anybody who works for me, they get, they get clients, right? Mm -hmm. And people yep. think that, oh, man, because you work for him. I know what he does. Yep. I see it. Yep. I'll hire him. Yep. Oh, he ran your ads? I'm going to hire him. And then they'd be like, man, this person sucks. <laughs> and they'd be like, yeah, 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 yeah. They're not that great. Yeah. See, as a business owner and as a brand person, people, entrepreneurs got to realize is that you're only as great. You're the product. Mm -hmm. You have to realize that. Mm -hmm. People will be like, oh, so-and-so helped you brand ads and made me. No, no, no. no. Don't, Let me yeah. explain something to you. That's crazy. Um, they're good at what they do. Mm. But I'm better at being me, and they can never reduplicate me. Mm -hmm. See, I, you, you, if you don't go and put and spend twenty thousand dollars in Louis, thirty thousand in Louis, come on, um, you're not gonna have them boxes. If you don't go spend two hundred thousand on that car, yep. yeah, you're not gonna have that McLaren. If you don't go spend motherfucking one point five, one point six for this house, yeah, 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 you're not gonna have that house. Yep. And being this sugar low and being this country club, yeah. and then you wouldn't be able to shoot the ads that I shot. That's okay, yep. you think that the ad runner was good what about the opportunity to actually create this ad oh you think that when me being on these vacations and i'm in maldives and i'm underwater in a twenty-five thousand dollar hotel night room that you can reduplicate you can't duplicate what i do nope. so unless you somebody asks like yo i want to do a conference like you did i said spend the money i said I, when i did vegas it was three million dollars tough i spent no not three two million dollars i spent 2.3 million to do that event yeah tough Spend the money. Yeah, spend the money. You then also spend the money every single month on advertising. <laughs> People say that about me all the time. Like, yo. So D I always want us to spend the money because I know that it's gonna bring money back. But it then but you're well spoken. Mm. Everybody can't just spend the money if you don't have the yeah. Ability to speak. Yeah. If you don't have the 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 the, the candidness mm -hmm. to where people actually like you. Yeah. And yeah. you're actually a good person and yeah. the energy comes across. Yeah. These yeah. are also skill sets that people have to analyze and go, I'm not that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care if you know everything, but bro, can you can you can you get clean when it's time to get clean? Can you clean up well and present well? Absolutely. Or are you are you okay with just being like, you know, you know fuck y'all. You know, shoes are shoes. It's not. It's not. Your appearance matters, and you got to know when it's cool. I go days, two, three days, and I'll be, I, I'll wear the same sweatsuit, and I'll just be sitting around the house, right. and my wife's like, and I'll be like, eh, I'm just, just stop yeah. talking to me. I just, I'm just, yeah. But I know when it's time to go. I know yep. when it's time to turn up. Yep. But this makes a difference, and people don't mm -hmm. realize that, like, yo, you can't just, you can't just be me by hiring somebody that yeah. I hire, yeah. and an employee does not, because some people will go and hire and be like, oh. You do Dion's, you Dion video guy? Yeah. You Dion social media manager? <laughs> Come with me. Yeah. You think that you think the social media manager made me? 
You understand? He had to come. Who you think paid for that jet for us to get the foot? You think come this on. social media manager come on. got the content? And cre- these, this is not fake. Yeah. This is not AI. Yeah. This is my real life. Yeah. So I'm creating content and things around my real life. Mm-hmm. And if you don't, then these are things that attract people. My actual marriage. You think you not being married is going to give this? My wife and kids give people the ability to connect with me as a human. Come on. And these are things that we got to realize, like your morals, your integrity shows. People can see that, Mm -hmm. right? And that's one thing. But then it's also my ability to help people. Yes. Like like you. I do it like this. You help so many people. We got people watching. What you got to give? Give them something. All right. So (laughs) if they they text him 500 to, let me make sure I get my number. I think that's 855-487. Five one one seven. I'm just gonna double check for y'all. Mm-hmm. Yep. If you text him five hundred to eight five five four eight seven five one one seven, everybody gonna get a free copy of my ebook. What's the name ebook? Metro Two ebook is gonna teach you how to structure your personal credit profile, how the data points need to be structured so you can go get funding once you get good credit. Then it's gonna teach you about Metro Two, the fundamentals on Metro Two, how to work the software, all about our free training. It's gonna break everything down so that way you ain't gotta figure it out. It's all laid out in the book. Okay. So text him five hundred. Yep. To 855-487-5117. Okay, now watch this though, right? And I'm gonna tell y'all something that's candid. I put him on the spot and said, give him something away. How long will it take your team to implement that before this episode come out? How long will it take for you to go and tell your team and be like, yo, put the keyword him 500 nah, and we're gonna run into this one? It's, I, it's a text, that's it. It's already set up though. It's what done. I'm saying is yeah. your systems are in place. Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. It's not built yet. He did it on the spot and used my name. He understood that. Y'all see it in real time. Like, y'all getting to see it in real time mm-hmm. entrepreneurship and how you can move on and go. I say, yo, give my people something. Why? Because I know everybody has things that they can give away that they have value that they can extend, right? Mm-hmm. They go, okay, well, use him 500 and text it to my number. Okay, long as my this the right phone number, I know the keyword is when it come through, I know I can go in, I can go, when I get off here, I can call my team, we gonna get on the computer, we gonna be like, okay, send this, send this to... M500, mm-hmm. anybody comes in through M500 or watching mm-hmm. Wealth Therapy, we're going to send them this ebook. Yep. Now, guess what happens? It's a simple automation. What you using? Um, Go High Level, ManyChat? Uh, uh, for that on one, Mobile Text Alerts. Mobile Text Alerts. Yep. So on Mobile Text Alerts, boom, and it's automatically delivered. This is the importance also of a team, but also systems. Absolutely. A lot of people don't have the systems and putting things in place and don't understand it. I think, I think the biggest system that you need to have is, is a coach, though. Like, like a lot of the stuff that I learned, a lot of stuff that I, I've been able to understand is put myself in rooms and environments and having a coach and be around like-minded individuals who are running plays and who know information. Like, it's a lot of people who can have their first six or seven figure year if they just pay me and you to be their coach. Like, like in like five, six months, and it, and it may sound crazy, but you can pay like five, 10, 15, 20, 30,000 or myself and we'll give you everything that you need to do and put in place. Now, whether you do it or not, it's different. I can't make you do no work. I, I can lead you. I can show you. I can point you in the right direction. I can be your guidance. I can give you the answers that you're looking mm-hmm. for, but I can't make you do the work. But just me knowing the stuff that I know, like, bro, that's, this is why me and you have created so many millionaires, so many six-figure earners, so many people quitting their jobs. Like, mm-hmm. I, I can't have over 17,000 students just by teaching some bullshit. Like, it don't work that way. Like, like I'm teaching real stuff that's working in real time, getting people real results. Like that's the only way for you to really impact people and have like those results and give people the results based upon you doing it, and then you reaching back and you teaching it too. So it's like, bro, yeah, it's just, the system, the best system that I know that I can have is having a coach because they're gonna save me some time, energy, and money. That's the best system ever, yeah. ever. And that and that's a fact. And you know, one thing about it, people don't realize is that you get a coach and listen to them. Mm. Yeah. You get a coach and you listen to him. All right. But look, man, bro, I, I, I think I usually go an hour out. We actually <laughs> went over an hour. Uh, definitely a great conversation. Absolutely, bro. The, the, the journey that you've been on is amazing. And just salute to everything that you, you've been able to build, accomplish, and the example that you set. I appreciate it. And for you, me, I'm one of the ones that's like I tell you, like I salute people who grind. Um, and the understanding is that congratulations, you made millions. Mm-hmm. I didn't lose when you won. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and it's always room, and I think as, as a leader, we always have to make room for other people mm-hmm. and then embrace them. Absolutely. Embrace those who are willing to work, who are willing to go out there and, and put the work in and get on the grind and mm-hmm. execute. We got to embrace them because yep. a lot of people that come before us won't embrace us. 
I'm not embraced by a lot of the older generations that come in the financial literacy space because they feel like I took a spot. That's crazy. And it's like, yo, just share. It's okay for us to both exist. Absolutely. And they don't realize that. So I always look back and go and reach out and anybody that's coming up. And it's like, yo, you making space, you making noise. Like, it's okay. We don't have to not talk. It don't matter if you do that and I do this. It's okay. Yeah. You out here eating. Yeah. I see Gillian Wallow on Joe Button podcast. Mm -hmm. Like, Joe Button on there. It's like, I see different people on different. And it's like, look at how people, they on drink champs. They on, and it's like, well, y'all both do podcasts. Like, I interview on podcasts. Yep. Because we both winning. Yep. And we can win out here. Yep. And it's okay for us to be able to win. So, but look. Today was a, uh, this was a dope conversation, I think, for Wealth Therapy. For I sure. appreciate you. And um, yeah, y'all make sure y'all text HEM500. I'm going to put it in the description. All one um, word, HEM500, all one word. 855-487-5117. Yep. And this is what I'm going to do, too. I'm going to get them. I'm doing a, uh, I'm doing a, fr I'm doing a five live day coaching event where they can come in. I'm going to give them 50% off the tickets, too. It's on me. I got you. All for you. This is just for you, your people. You that, that's me that's right now. So you know listen, but that's, that, that's time dated. Yeah. I tell y'all, it's time dated because that's now. That's now. The five day challenge is now. When you doing that? That is gonna be on November fourth through the eighth. November fourth through the eighth. Yep. That's now. Yep. But for the ebook, um, if it's if this if you watching this and it's after forever after November fourth through the eighth, you can't it. get the fifty percent off. So I don't want y'all to be like, yo, <laughs> let me get fifty percent off that challenge. Right. It's November fourth through the eighth. That's if it. If you miss that, that's if it. If you watching this in December, right, you missed the ball on that. But. Yeah. You still can get the ebook. Still big ebook. Right. I got it. Yeah. Listen, man, I appreciate you, boss. Yes, sir. As always, it's another episode wrap for Wealth Therapy. Y'all stay tuned. Let's get it.